here's what a typical to-do list looks like where there's a team and they're working on multiple projects and they've got different roles. So let's just explain what we're seeing here. This section over here, the writer to-do, has their list of things to do. Editor to-do is here with the editor's list of things to do. And to the far right, we've got the boss's to-do list where the boss does the video recording as well as making sure projects are running on track. So we're going to consider the boss is also going to be the project manager for this. Up the top here, we've got a waiting to to-do view where the boss is able to project manage what's going on and pass jobs on when they're ready to go. So in your typical to-do list, everybody has everything showing. This is really discouraging because imagine you're the editor, you come into work, you go, oh, okay, four things to do. You start looking at doing the script editing for the sports video project and you go, ah, oh, the script hasn't been written yet. I can't do that. Then you go, well, how's the cooking video project going? Can I edit that script? Turns out that's not done either. And of course you can't edit the videos that the scripts were based on because the scripts aren't finished. While it looks like there's a lot that can be done, there's nothing there that's actually ready to do now. This makes it really discouraging and this is why to-do lists often fail. Not because to-do lists aren't really important and really useful, but because to-do lists, when they don't show you what is actually ready to do now, take so much time looking through them to see what you can do and without giving results, they get abandoned and just become a long list of abandoned tasks. So we're gonna look at how I've managed to make to-do lists much more functional in a workplace, especially where the workplace is sharing different tasks across multiple roles. So we'll have a look here. Our waiting to do, do list only functions when we're using a view that organizes everything by what's ready to do, what's been done and what's waiting to do. What I've done here is created a powerful system to enable you to know what needs to be done, what's ready to do, and only shows the items that are ready to do. So in this example, we're gonna use the view to do to waiting. This is something that you would only do when you've set up a whole lot of tasks and you haven't organized what's ready to do and what's waiting. So we grab everything that's in the to-do list, drag it over to the waiting list. Immediately we can see that all of these tasks that the boss had to do and the editor had to do are gone. The only tasks remaining are the script writer to write the initial scripts. Now we're going to change it to the project management view, which we've called waiting to to do. This view just enables you to find anything that is waiting that should actually be in the to-do list. So we'll see this in action when the script writer comes in and they start working on the sports video script. They mark that as done. All of a sudden, this appears in the waiting to to-do list and the boss who's keeping an eye on this list just drags it across to to-do. Everything else is done for him. All of a sudden, the editor sees that they've got a job ready to do. So they do that job, we'll mark that as done. And at the same time, the script writer has gone and written the other script. Now the boss goes, oh, a couple more jobs have turned up. We'll just drag them across to to do. Doesn't even have to read what they are, know anything about them, just if they're in this column, drag them to that column. All of a sudden, the editor's got a job to do and the boss has got a job to do. So the boss goes, oh, here we go, we can record this video. So they mark that as done once they've recorded it and the boss drags that across. Now the editor's got two jobs to do, has so got a script to edit and a video to edit. They have a busy day and mark them as done. The boss who's project managing this grabs both of those items, drags them over to the to-do list Turns out that they're for him to do. So he marks these as done. He records the video and checks over the sports video project. That's all looking good. Marks that as done. Now this video is ready to edit. So he drags that across to the to-do list. The editor sees another job turn up. Marks it as done. The boss goes, yep. The cooking project has been done. We're fine with that. We can drag that straight across to the done list. Everything's done. 
not only is everything done, everything was done in a way that was coordinated where everybody knew exactly what was available for them to do and they weren't distracted by anything that was not available to do. That's just one of the many values of having relationships built into your to-do list. Let's have a look at something else that you can see. We're gonna change the view here from waiting to to-do to have a look at all subtasks. In the all subtasks view, we're having a look at everything to do with the sports video project. We can see that everything's been done, but we can also see here under the time taken that it's taken 23 hours. These aren't indicative numbers, but they show you that you can get a summary of the total amount of hours that it took to get this job done. Another advantage in having relationships between your parent tasks, subtasks and following tasks is that you can simplify your view. So we're going to have a look at the parent view that shows just the parent tasks and list the subtasks as one of their fields. So we'll go change the view to parents. Here we can see we've got just two rows listed in our table. Those two rows show the two parent tasks, which are sports video project and cooking video project. In the sports video project, you can see the subtasks all listed under the subtask property and the previous tasks and following tasks as you might want to see them. You can hide any of these as you go. Having these relationships is incredibly powerful and you might be thinking, how much work does it take to build all those relationships to get all of these advantages? I've done some tricky things here. We've created templates and these templates have enabled us to automate most of what we need to do. So I'm going to show you now how easy it is to create a new project with a series of subtasks, which are also following tasks. Subtasks and following tasks are often the same thing because often you have one parent project with a lot of subtasks and these subtasks need to be done in an order. So let's go ahead and create a new project with a series of subtasks, which are also following tasks. We're going to call it Lego Video Project and we'll give it a subtask called write script. Now we're gonna make another template by duplicating the existing template and make a minor edit to it. So we duplicate it. We're gonna call it Lego. And we're gonna set the parent task and the following task to be the Lego project. That's all we've got to do for that. So let's go and make some subtasks and following tasks that we do after writing the script. So next we're going to edit the script. And then we'll record the video. And then we'll edit the video down. And that's all we've got to do to create our new project. Very quick, very simple. The LEGO video project will wait until all the subtasks are done. We'll assign the roles. So the person who's filming it is also the boss. The editor does the editing. And the writer does the writing. And that's our job ready to go. As you can see, it's already got the script writing as to do and nothing else is showing up. As soon as we make that job done and we show our waiting to to do view, we can drag that edit script over to ready to do and we see it shows up straight away for the editor to do. It's as simple as that. As you can see, it was very quick and easy to build those relationships and using those relationships gives you a lot of power and control over your workflow and makes life easier for everybody. Everyone's more productive. Very powerful system and I hope you're looking forward to using this in your own work.